Okay, this is my kids' favorite granola. And this granola is so forgiving, so easy. You can make it with probably things you have in your pantry. Um, there are some standard things, but they're probably things you have. And then you can kind of play with this recipe and add things that you like, take out the things you don't like. So, so easy. And the great part about it is it comes together really fast and then it makes your house smell amazing while it's baking. So here's what you do. Um, you're gonna have some wet ingredients and dry ingredients. So we're gonna put all of the wet ingredients in a small saucepan. And the first thing you want is an oil. So you can use canola oil. Um, you can actually use any oil that you like. Do not use olive oil, that's, that's got too much flavor. Um, I prefer coconut oil. That is my favorite oil to do this recipe with. Um, and coconut oil comes in a solid form like this. It kind of looks like old fashioned Crisco, um, but it melts quickly and becomes liquid. So you want about a cup of oil, any oil that you choose. I like the properties of coconut oil too. And the smell, the great thing about coconut, coconut oil is it smells oh, fantastic at the beginning, but it doesn't carry that coconut flavor into the baking. So I have a cup of coconut oil. And again, like that's a rough cup right there. I'm gonna put that in my saucepan. And then I need some sweetener. And so I am going to use honey and syrup. So let's get that out. Now you can um, stick this all in a Pyrex glass and put it in the microwave if you want. I just happen to like the saucepan. Um, so you're gonna take a half a cup of syrup and this is grade A. There really is a difference in the grades. Grade B is a little richer to me. I like grade B better, but this is Costco. And when you have a family of six and you plow through syrup, Costco is your best friend. And I know it's organic. Look, all syrup is organic. So I don't think they're spraying syrup. So um, I, you don't need to buy organic. It just so happens to be what I got on sale. Um, and then I have a half a cup of honey. I do really get picky about my honey. I like to buy local honey. So honey is one of those things that if you can find a local to your area, the properties in honey are so good for you. Um, there's some really neat research out there about how honey can help with allergies. Um, like my kids have some allergies to the grasses and the pollens in this area. And I've started giving them a tablespoon of honey every day. Not all my kids, but two of them um, to hopefully kind of combat those allergies. So anyways, half a cup of honey and use any honey you want. I just happen to love local honey, local raw honey. Now, if you make this granola and you're like, that's too sweet, just cut those sweeteners in half. And you can also play with your sweeteners. If you like monk fruit as a sweetener, try it. If you like something else, agave, try it. Okay. And I don't like to waste a thing, so I'm gonna get all my stuff out there. And it smells so good. I like that stiff spatula for digging out the coconut, but I like the thin, the flexible one for getting my Pyrex clean. Okay. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla, about a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And I'm gonna pop that on the stove and just put it on low. And all I want it to do is kind of melt together and um, just become smooth. That's all, not looking for a boil or anything. So now I'm gonna grab my bowl. And in my bowl, I'm gonna put, where, where's my, here we are. I'm gonna put my oats. So these are old fashioned oats. These are not quick cooking. You don't want quick cooking, but old fashioned oats. Quick cooking oats are basically old fashioned oats that have been like chopped up. I want the whole oat, so old fashioned. So six cups of those. We plow through old fashioned oats. I get those at Costco too. All right, five. All right. And then here's where it gets.
it's fun. You can put anything you want in these, um, this granola. So I have six cups of old fashioned oats. I am also going to stick in about a cup of coconut. We love coconut. Um, you can get the sweetened or the unsweetened kind. This just so happens to be what I have in my cupboard since we made gingerbread houses the other day. It's sweetened coconut. Okay, there's a cup of that. And you know what? I might even finish it off. So, cup and a half. Um, I like to stick some really healthy things in there. This is wheat germ. Wheat germ has some great vitamins. That's what it looks like. And I think it's found over near like the oatmeal and the cream of wheat in that section. I'm putting a cup in there. This is a great recipe to sneak in some really healthy things. So I've got wheat germ. Sometimes I have chia seeds. Let's see if I have any of those. I don't have any chia, but I do have flax seeds. So I'm gonna stick my flax seeds in there. And these are whole flax seeds. There you go. Great fiber. I'm gonna put, probably put about a half a cup in there. So you can put chia, you can put flax in, you can put, um, gosh, any of that stuff, right? Now, you want three cups of any kind of nut. So, um, any kind, whatever you want. I just so happen to have pecans. So pecans, I live in Virginia, and pecans are in season like September through November here, and they are fantastic. You can get local pecans, shell them yourself. Um, so I'm gonna do about, about three cups of pecans. But we've done almonds, um, I've done pine nuts, walnuts. So I'm doing what I have, and that is pecans. So I'm gonna give these a rough chop. We don't like them too big. The thing about cutting nuts is you wanna use your biggest knife and make sure it's sharp. If you are using a dull knife, you will be frustrated. You might also get injured. I find my, my injuries mostly happen when I use my dull knives or ones I haven't sharpened. I just keep a little tool to quickly sharpen them. I'll show you what it looks like. I keep this in my drawer and many times just before I use my big knives, I just give them a quick little slide on the sharpener and it gives them just a nice brand new raw edge. But I would say about once a year, I do drop my knives off. Um, at a professional sharpener and have him or her give them a really good sharpen. So, okay, so my pecans have a nice rough chop. I love pecans. Okay, I'm gonna take my bowl. Actually, one of the things I love to use is a pastry bench scraper. And this helps me pick up material quickly. All right, so there are my pecans. Now, I think kind of the secret ingredient to this granola is really weird. It's dried milk, looks like this. You can get dried milk, um, and again, it's over in the baking area, and you can get um, a box of packets that are about a cup each. And um, this is, low fat or non-fat, sorry, non-fat dry milk. Dump it in, you won't even know it's in there, but it just lends this, just a richness to the granola. And then the last secret part to this particular granola recipe is pumpkin pie spice, which I am now having to hunt down. Where is it? Here it is. Thought I was out. Pumpkin pie spice is a mix of all those really fantastic fall spices. I actually made my own and just put it in one of these glass containers. It's cinnamon and nutmeg and allspice. It's really yummy. I will link to um, how to make your own pumpkin pie spice, but this is a teaspoon, roughly. It smells absolutely amazing. And again, you can leave this out if you're not a fan or you can keep it in. So here are my ingredients. I'm gonna grab a big spoon and give it a toss. I wish you could smell this. It smells so good. It's like all the false scents. And then I'm gonna take my wet ingredients that are all melted and ready to go. 
So there they are, all liquidy. I'm gonna dump those in and get every last drop. And just give this a nice stir and get everything coated. So if you change up your oils or your sweeteners, that's fine. Just use the same ratios because you want enough liquid to coat your dry. All right. So this recipe is from kind of loosely based off a recipe or a granola that I tasted at a bed and breakfast in Vermont like 25 years ago. And um, the lady didn't really have a recipe. She just kind of told me some of the things she put into it. So I've kind of tweaked it over the years and this is the recipe we've kind of settled on as a family. I make this probably every other week or whenever my kids beg for it. They love it warm right out of the oven. They love it with milk, plain, over yogurt. It's just so, so good. So if you have a really big sheet pan, like this is a pretty big one, maybe uh, 18 by, maybe, maybe 16 by 24. Um, use that. If you only have small ones, then use two. So my granola is going down there, right onto the pan. You don't need to spray it. You don't need to line it and then spread out your granola. And you're gonna pop it in the oven at 200 for two hours. And every once in a while, just open the oven, give it a quick little stir, and then let it keep cooking. Now, um, this will smell your whole kitchen up. It will smell amazing. And after two hours, if it feels dry, then it's done. You might wanna um, check it at two hours and give it like another 20 minutes if it's still a little wet. It just depends on how big your sheet pan is. So that's what it looks like. And um, let me know if you make it. I'd love to hear. Okay. Thanks, guys.